Hi, welcome to Lumi. In this video, we will discuss more derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. We spend the whole video discussing this kind of derivative since exponential and logarithmic functions have some useful properties that can help us solve problems that cannot be solved before. First, let us recall the derivative of a logarithmic function of f of x equals to log of x base a, which equals to 1 over x times ln of a. For example, let us consider the derivative of f of x equals to log of 2x plus sine of x base 10. We can use the derivative of logarithmic function and the chain rule to calculate the derivative. Our first step would be to write it as a derivative. So you have the derivative of log of 2 plus sine of x base 10. The second step would be writing the derivative itself, 1 over 2 plus sine of x times ln of 10, times the derivative of the inside of the logarithm, in this case is derivative of 2 plus sine of x. And then the third step would be calculating the derivative of the inside and combining it with the derivative of the logarithm itself. So it will be cosine of x over 2 plus sine of x times ln of 10. There is a special case of logarithm functions when the base a is equal to e. When that happens, the log of x base e becomes natural logarithm or ln of x. And we call this function the natural logarithm function. And the derivative of a natural logarithm function or ln is going to always equal to 1 over x. Then we can combine this with the chain rule and have some useful results. In this case, when you're taking the derivative of a natural logarithm with an interior function, you can say that the derivative is going to be the derivative of the interior function over the function itself. This is just some basic ideas. We spend a whole video on exponential and logarithmic functions since for some complicated functions, taking the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation is useful. And then we can use the laws of logarithm can significantly simplify the calculation for us going forward. Now let's consider the example f of x equals to x to the power of 4 over 3 square root of x squared plus 1 over 3x plus 2 to the power of 5. If we want to find the derivative of this function, the first idea that comes to our mind is using combination of quotient rule, product rule, and the chain rule. However, this is, needs a huge calculation. Now let's use the properties of logarithm that you learned in high school. So for example, if you have log of a, b base c, you can write it as log of a base c plus log of b base c. And also, if you have log of a to the power of b base c, you can bring the power over and have b log of a c. Most of you guys should be familiar with these properties since they are mostly used in high school, but these tricks can help us find the derivative of functions with many powers or complicated functions being multiplied by each other. Going back to the example that we had in hand, we can use the properties of logarithm to simplify the equation in order for us to be able to find the derivative. So I take the ln of both sides, so I'll have ln of y equals to 3 over 4 ln of x, taking the power and bringing it over, plus 1 over 2 ln of x squared plus 1, minus 5 ln of 3x plus 2. This is just using the properties of logarithm. Then I can take the derivative of both sides. So I take the derivative of the left side, which will give me y prime over y, because the derivative of ln of y will be y prime over y, equals to 3 over 4 times 1 over x plus 1 over 2 times 2x over x squared plus 1 minus 5 times 3 over 3x plus 2. Now here on the third step, pay attention to what I do. I change the y prime into dy over dx and I multiply both sides of that equation by y to get rid of the y on, uh, y on the left side. So now I'll have dy over dx equals to y multiplied by the whole equation that I already found in the second step. And in the fourth step, all I have to do is just plug back the y value that I have, which was the original equation that we had, 
into the equation that I found in the third step, and I have my derivative. And as you may see, this becomes much more simpler than just finding the derivative using the quotient rule, the product rule, and so on and so forth. Next, we focus on the derivative of exponential functions and see if there exist some properties of exponential functions which can help us solve some of the hard derivatives problem. First, let's recall the most basic thing, the derivative of the exponential function. The exponential function f of x equals to a of x, where a is bigger than zero, is differentiable on its domain. Hence, the derivative of this function, a of x, is always going to equal to a to the power of x ln of a. Of course, there's special cases. In this case, the special case would be if a is equal to e, then we have the derivative of the natural logarithm, derivative of e of x, to always equal to e of x itself, so the function itself. Note that the natural exponential function has a special property that the derivative is equal to itself. This is a nice property since it may help us simplify some of the calculation. But when we want to try applying the chain rule, we will have the derivative of e to a power of any function to be e to the power of u, the function itself, times the derivative of the exponent or the function in the exponent. Here is a very simple example for us to consider. Find the derivative of this function, which is e to the power of negative 4x times sine of 5x. So taking the derivative of this function, you know that it's going to be a product rule. And you know the derivative of the second one, which is going to be the sine of 5x, is going to equal to cos of 5x times 5 times e to the power of negative 4x. And the derivative of e to the power of negative 4x is going to equal to e to the power of negative 4x times negative 4, multiplied by sine of 5x, of course. And then when you try to simplify this, you can just factor out e to the power of negative 4x times 5 cos of 5x minus 4 sine of 5x. Now let's talk about something special. From the definition of exponential algorithmic functions, we have the following property. x is going to always equal to e to the power of ln of x. So whenever you see e to the power of ln of x, it's always going to give you x itself. We can use this property to find the derivative of functions in the form of g of x to the power of h of x. So a function to the power of another function. For example, let's consider the function f of x equals to cos of x to the power of sine of x. To find the derivative of this function, first we need to rewrite the function in the form of f of x equals to e to the power of sine of x ln of cosine of x. So that will be our first step. Then we can take the derivative of it. In this case, it's going to be f prime of x is equal to e to the power of sine x ln of cosine of x times the derivative of the exponent, in this case, sine of x ln of cosine of x. So that will be our second step. And in our third step, it would be cos of x to the power of sine of x, right? Because that's the derivative of e of x times cos of x times ln of x cosine of x plus sine of x times minus sine of x over cosine of x. We can also solve this problem by logarithm differentiation. In fact, these two methods are basically equivalent. In summary, in this video, we reviewed some basic properties of exponential and logarithmic functions. Also, we recalled their derivatives as well. Then we introduced the method of exponential and logarithmic function differentiation. These methods can help us deal with functions with power terms and difficult examples. That's all for our video today. Thank you guys for watching.